G'day, I'm Paul. Have you always wanted a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, but kind of don't want to look like someone who drives a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon? Well, maybe this is the solution. This is called the Nissan Patrol Warrior. It is just a Nissan Patrol, but it has been hotted up with some off-road bits and an exhaust as well that I'm going to show you a little later on. Now, this competes with things like Land Rover Defender, Toyota Land Cruiser, Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, that kind of thing. It's priced at just over $100,000, so it is incredible value for money when you consider exactly what you're getting with this package. There is a new patrol just around the corner, and I think the price is going to go through the roof, so probably get this while you can. Today we're going to do a detailed review and a little bit of light off-roading with this, so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you could scroll down and use the chapters below, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a big old beast. Now let's talk design. Number one, I love the way that the Patrol looks just as it is without all this stuff on it. Styling is subjective, but I think given how old the car and the platform is, I think it still actually looks pretty cool. Now the Patrol Warrior builds on that. So it has a stack of off-road components. And by the way, you've got four colors to choose from. The optional ones are 650 bucks. It builds on that with a little bit of off-road uh, trickery and also extra ride height. So down the front here, piano black there, new Nissan logo, full LED head lights with washers as well. An important thing if you are going off-road that will blast off any debris that's left on those headlights. But have a look down here. So the car actually benefits from a 50 mil lift. Part of that is from suspension and then part of that is from the tires as well. And I'll run you through that split in just a sec. Now beneath the front of the car here you've got 2.3 mil steel bash plate as well if you are going to do some serious off-roading. You also have an improvement on the approach angle. So I'll run through that when we go off-road but you can see here with this new front end they've really carved that bottom section out which means that if you are going to do some proper off-roading you're not going to be destroying the lower section of the car if you do find yourself on a fairly steep rock face. So very impressed with that. Now around the side here, 18 inch alloy wheels. So machine finish on the outside there, piano black in the center. Big old set of all-terrain tires. So this is a 34 inch tire. This contributes part of that lift. 21 mil of the lift comes from the tires. 29 mil of the lift comes from the suspension changes. So stiffer front springs. They've also modified the hydraulic anti-roll system in this to cater for the extra ride height and to ensure that it's still has the same handling characteristics of the regular patrol. Front and rear track has also increased slightly as well to accommodate all of these extra components. You've got wheel arch cladding here as well so people know that you're driving an off-road vehicle. A little bit of chrome here with patrol on the side there. You've got piano black on the side there for the wing mirror with a camera built in under there. V8 badge here just in case you forget what you're driving and then warrior decals down the side here. Now if you have a little sticky beak under here you've got yourself side exit exhaust as well so it's a bimodal system. When you hit that throttle it's going to activate that side exhaust and let out a big old roar down the side of the car which I cannot wait to hear. You've got privacy glass. Now while the front is stiffer the rear is slightly softer. It also has progressive rate bump stops as well. There's also been damper changes as well to accommodate for all of this extra work they've done. So it isn't just a sticker pack they actually have gone to a lot of effort here to make all of this work come around to the back with me now around the back led tail lights integrated into here a warrior badge along the back there rated recovery points you also have modifications here to the tow bar to accommodate that spare tire that sits beneath there this also has a gvm upgrade as well so all of these extra components have added weight the gvm upgrade gives you a little bit more latitude when it comes to towing as well that it retains its three and a half ton brake towing capacity so let me know what you reckon about the design design of this thing. Do you think it looks good? And what do you reckon about the price as well? Would you rather pay a lot more for a different brand or do you think that they've hit the sweet spot with this? It is based on the TI, not the TIL, but they're pretty much the same with a few feature differences between them. So we're inside the Patrol Warrior. This is what the key looks like. You've got Nissan badge up the top there. Lock, unlock, panic. It's a proximity sensing key. So you can leave that in your pocket. Push button start just over here. Have a look at this. Welcome to 1990, which is where it feels like this interior came from. Uh, I'll run you through the infotainment in just a second, but yeah, it is classic 90s luxury SUV with a million buttons and all that sort of stuff. But look, to be honest, it's not the end of the world. A lot of people aren't into technology and all the whiz-bang gadgets and stuff. So to them, this is going to work because there is a button for everything. You just push it and stuff gets done. What I do like that they've done here, though, with the Warrior is added that uh, Alcantara Tara suede treatment along the top there with Warrior etched into it. Along the doors as well, it really just gives this bit of a cool vibe inside the cabin. 
Really not a huge fan of all this piano black though. It is absolutely everywhere. It kind of gives me chills just looking at it. But um, outside of that, you know, this interior, I guess it is what it is. And CD player, you don't get that these days in many other cars. So touch points uh, in the center there. It's nice and soft, soft on the door too. How soft is it? We've got our durometer tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you do want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, build quality, what is it like? A little bit sort of wonky there in the center. That's not too bad. I will mention that this is a pre-production car, so some of these bits and pieces may not be in the final uh, spec version. And this is what the door sounds like. Now let's talk infotainment. This is just going to be a brief discussion. So eight inch infotainment screen. Yeah, it's all sort of pretty straightforward. You have inbuilt satellite navigation. Uh, there are apps. Uh, I'm not entirely sure whether you can actually load anything interesting on here, but I think it's just stuff like your performance uh, clock compass, that, that type of thing. Uh, there's sort of nothing else sort of too interesting there. Outside of that, you have AM and FM radio, and then a six speaker stereo as well with the ability to play CDs and uh, Bluetooth too. So nothing too crash hot there. Head of the driver is a tiny little digital display for your trip computer and other functions, and then analog gauges off to either side as well. Now let's talk about safety features. So you've got autonomous emergency braking, you've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror, you've got a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You've also got radar cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, a lane keeping assistant. Then in addition to all of that, you have front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So there it is there. Look, the camera's really not very impressive. It's quite low quality, but um, you know, it, it, uh, it is what it is. Uh, you can see down the sides of the car, out the front there as well. Uh, so that's not too bad. And then I'll show you what it looks like out the rear. There it is there. So it is a bit tricky to see what's in our suitcase, but I guess it is what it is. <laughs> and finally, our horn. What about your practicality? Uh, let's start off with your connectivity. So you've got a 12 volt outlet down the bottom here, two USB-A ports. In here, you've got another 12 volt outlet as well. In terms of storing your things, your phone can kind of just live wherever there's stacks of storage spots around here. Your water bottle fits into there quite nicely. There are no teeth though, so it kind of just moves around a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit annoying. Uh, inside the door, the bottle fits fine. I'll try the big bottle as well inside the door. Boom, look at that, fits nicely too. In addition to that, you've also got storage under here. It's a nice big space. You've got a glove box over here as well, which is pretty reasonably sized. And then you also have a sunglasses holder up the top. What about your comfort? So you have dual zone automatic climate control. You've got electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger. So you can go forwards, backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards. You can lift the front of the seat, the back of the seat. You have lumbar adjustment as well. Seats are super comfy too. They're nice and soft and you just sit in them and you just relax. It's just a nice place to be seated. In terms of your steering, it is manually adjustable. It offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And then on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, so we're in the second row. Room here is excellent. So heaps of knee room, toe room's great. Headroom is excellent as well. Uh, air vents up the top here. Get that Alcantara treatment continuing on the door there as well. Uh, now this is cool. So you've got USB-A ports down here for charging devices, a 12 volt outlet, there's a third zone of climate control. But if you do want access to your glove box, all you do is push that and then that cracks open from there, which is cool. Map pockets in the back of the seats. You have a center armrest here with a set of cup holders and then your bottle can go inside the door as well. In terms of the kids, you've got two ISO fix points on the two outboard seats, top tether points as well. And then our window test, it's auto up and down. Does it go all the way down? Boom, there it is. Now, third row, what's it like? Can you actually fit an adult in there? Only one way to find out. So you pull this forward, that tumbles out of the way. And then you climb on in. Yeah. Actually surprised by that. I thought this was going to be really cramped. Like it is, it is cramped, but for an adult, it's actually not the end of the world. And the other unique thing about uh, this particular spec of the Patrol is that it's an eight seater. So two at the front, three here and three here as well. So it is a very small second seat there, but you can legally carry eight people in this vehicle. You got cup holders off to the side, air vents up the top, grab handles as well. 
then top tether point behind this seat too. So not a bad place to be seated and uh, even for adults for shorter trips, I think it'd be perfectly fine. So what's your cargo space like? crack this open. So you have just under 500 litres available to you here behind the third row when the third row is up. You've got a 12 volt outlet off to the side, a little bit of storage under here as well and then under here you've got a jack and a couple of other bits and pieces for that spare tyre. Show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So there's one bag and then there's your other bag as well. So it's actually a pretty generous space for a vehicle with a third row. Normally it's quite cramped behind here so they've done a good job with that. Now, it does get better though, so if you do drop the third row out of the way, just fold that down, that expands the space to a little under 1500 litres, almost flat but it has a slight rise to it. If you do want to go even bigger, you can get rid of this and the second row as well. And that gives you just over 2600 litres of space with a sort of rising floor line. All right, so we have just hit the road in the Patrol Warrior. One of my favorite things about this, and, and probably the thing I like most above and beyond the Land Cruiser, is that this still uses a naturally aspirated V8. So every time you get on it, you hear it, it sings, it does everything that you want it to do, and it is, it is, it is a heap of fun, especially with that side exit exhaust. Uh, so it's a weird setup because they do have just a normal exhaust out the rear, but also the side exit one. So when you're driving along normally, it's going out the normal exhaust, but when you step on it, it starts spitting noise out the side there as well so that everyone can hear it. So uh, certainly sounds good from inside the cabin. Now, under the bonnet here, naturally aspirated 5.6 litre V8 petrol engine. It's our understanding that the next generation of this is going to go towards a turbocharged V6. So you probably want to get in uh, like now <laughs> if you want access to the V8. Produces just under 300 kilowatts of power and a little over 550 newton meters of torque. And it's all mated to a seven speed automatic transmission and it's a full time four wheel drive system. Now behind the wheel, what does all that feel like? Well, if you get stuck into it, Gearbox can be a little laggy at times, but it really isn't the end of the world. It's always ready to get up and boogie, and once it does start moving, it creates a lot of noise. It's not exactly a torque monster like you'll find in a lot of turbocharged diesel engines, but it does give you a nice punch in the back as it accelerates, so big win on that front. And I've got to say, sorry about all the rain. It is bucketing down today, so it's going to be interesting to see. <laughs> This goes on our faster drive. Uh, in terms of fuel economy, Nissan claims a figure of about 14 litres per 100 k's. Uh, you probably won't be surprised to hear that we're averaging closer to 20 at 19.6. And that is just the nature of this beast. It is going to use a lot of fuel, especially if you're driving it in and around the city. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't be buying this if you think it's going to be highly efficient. But do also have in the back of your head that if you are towing, these actually tend to be not that bad. When we did our big SUV comparison recently, you can click up there to watch that. In the towing test, we actually found that this wasn't outrageous in terms of the fuel economy when you were towing in comparison to some of the other cars in the segment. And the other big bonus as well is that this has a 140 litre fuel tank. So it means that uh, it is going to last a little while but before you have to actually go back to the servo to put a bit more juice in it. Now let's talk about ride and uh, what that feels like. So the changes they made to the suspension here they actually haven't ruined this. So the Patrol was always a pretty sort of nice riding car and that meant that the handling was sort of uh, a little floaty, but they really have tightened it up a bit here to cater towards the changes that they've made to the tyres. And it is firmer than a typical Patrol, but it's really not the end of the world. And uh, we've got our sine waves coming up here. Let's dial up the speed a little bit here. We'll get uh, 130 up to see what they feel like. I think this will be the ultimate test of what they've done with the ride and the body control here. So here we go. 130. It's actually quite surprising. It feels like it's going to get a lot of float on and, and sort of not have a great deal of body control at the top end, but it really settles nicely and a lot of that is down to that hydraulic uh, anti-roll system that they have in place. Gives you the flexibility of anti-roll bars without the disadvantage that you have off-road with those in terms of articulation. So yeah, it feels really nice there in terms of the ride. A little firm around the city, but not the end of the world. Okay, bumpy road time. This is probably more realistic in terms of what you're going to be using this car for. We do this at 90 k's an hour and this simulates like the worst road you've ever encountered in Australia. It's full of ruts and potholes and 
now when it's wet we've got lots of waterlogged sections as well and then we have a condensed sine wave as well that really puts a lot of stress on the car at 90 k's an hour and the suspension as well so here it is that is remarkably good you barely feel anything inside the cabin here they've done a, a tremendously good job here with the suspension i'm really impressed with how this performs in terms of road noise really isn't as much as i thought there was going to be these are meaty all-terrain tires but it actually performs pretty good out on the road, even on course chip country roads. This is how it went up against our calibrated sound meter. Now, there is no sport mode. Let's go for a punt around the track. We'll see what it feels like. And like I said, it is sopping wet at the moment. So, so <laughs> oh, this, um, oh, sweet. close to under steering off the track there um, yeah this this feels very reminiscent of my raptor with the ko2s <laughs> oh, right on the edge of traction here the other thing with our track as well is that it was deliberately designed in parts here to have a very low coefficient of friction so at parts of the track here i'll actually enter a corner and the steering will just randomly give way mid-corner <laughs> into understeer and happens with pretty much all cars here in the wet so doesn't surprise me that this is like this uh, but let me know in the comments section below do you want us to bring this back when it is dry so i can actually have a proper punt of it around here because one of the things that surprised me with the raptor is the raptor uh, in the wet is diabolically bad because of those tires but in the dry it actually has a surprising amount of traction and will let you have a bit of fun uh, well within its limits so uh, you know let me know if you want us to bring this back we'll come back with it when it is dry and go for a little punt around the track but i am pretty impressed with i guess what it was like when it was dry briefly this morning okay performance testing time i'm looking forward to this uh, before we get started with that i wanted to tell you about help me car expert inspired by our friends at CarWow. CarExpert, we're a big company and we actually have a stack of dealers on our platform and they're only there to get you the best deal. We only retain the dealers that are actually doing good deals for our visitors to the website and they also deal with cars that are in stock as well like this one. So if you are interested in getting a good deal on an in-stock car, just go to Google and type in Help Me Car Expert. So there is no official zero to 100 time, but we'll see how we go. I'm just gonna leave it in auto. I might turn traction control off as well and we'll go all the way through to 120 and just see how this performs. So here we go. Nice. That sound is so good. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> as we try and stop, all right, so zero to 100, 7.4 seconds for something as big as this, that is unreal. And then 80 to 120, five seconds. That is awesome. All right, uh, let's head back and um, let's go try a break from 100. It is going to be kind of a, a pointless task given it is so wet, but we'll give it a shot anyway. And if it does dry up later on, I'll um, come back for another crack, but yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, let's stop from 100. See how this performs. Here we go. Alright, it is um, as expected. <laughs> Taking just a little while. Uh, let's have a look. So, 100 to 0. Oh, wow. 5.1 seconds, 73.91 metres. I know it's wet, but um, that is an incredible stopping distance and not in a good way. So I know that these tyres aren't great for, for on-road performance and all that sort of stuff, but I think even in the Raptor that, um, that is slightly lighter than this, uh, the braking performance is significantly better. So it'd be interesting to see uh, if, if they actually did any calibration here to the ABS because it was mainly ABS that was stopping us from pulling up there. So uh, it's something I'll look into, but um, yeah, as a stopping distance, that, that definitely isn't very good. If you want to see how this vehicle compares to other the cars that we've tested we actually have a spreadsheet with all of those results just go down to the description below to see that so just a heads up uh, sorry to interrupt the video we actually did the braking test again once it dried up significantly better by like uh, 20 meters or something and i think it shows you that the abs calibration probably needs a bit of work uh, for wet weather conditions with these tires but when it is dry it is significantly better at stopping and now it's time for our reverse acceleration test. Let's see how we go. 
<laughs> that was like, I didn't even have time to look. That was like 70 something k's an hour. <laughs> that is unreal. Okay, let's do a little bit of light off-roading. I'm gonna run you through the specs here first. So let's start off with the approach and departure angle. So approach angle, 40 degrees. So they have lopped a whole lot off that front end to get it, that attack angle, that's awesome. So approach angle is the angle of the face you can approach before you hit something with the front of the car. The departure angle, on the other hand, 23 degrees. Not as good, but that integrates that tow bar in the rear as well. That's the angle of the face you can approach, but uh, in reverse from the back of the car. Uh, in addition to that, ground clearance, just over 320 millimeters. So that is thanks to that 50 mil lift. This already had quite a generous ground clearance as well. So that has just increased it even further. In terms of the hardware, you're in four wheel drive automatic most of the time, but then you can switch over to four wheel drive high range. You have four wheel drive low range, a rear diff lock, and then you have a number of different drive modes and a hill descent control as well that I'll run you through in just a second. Now, if you do want a better explanation of how all of this stuff works, we actually shot a video explaining four wheel drive controls and demonstrating them as well. So click up here to watch that. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna head over our mogul, our offset mogul first. Normally we do this in two wheel drive high range, but because this doesn't have two wheel drive, we'll just see what it's like. Uh, actually I'm gonna switch the parking sensors off. We'll see what this is like in uh, high range with the rear wheel off the ground, because it'll give us a good indication of what the traction control systems are like. That rear wheel to get off the ground. There it is around there. And give you a bit of an idea of what the articulation is like as well. So I'm just going to lean on the throttle and we'll let traction control do its work so I can feel it biting there. Is that wheel off the ground. Nice. That felt really nice and capable there. That traction control system is excellent. This did a really good job of maintaining momentum. All right, let's go back again. Okay, this time around, we do this in four-wheel drive high range. So I'm gonna flick that over now, that is engaged. So this is basically a cross-axle situation where we have only two tires with traction. And then we'll see how the car maintains itself through here. So we'll just get it set up in that spot, just there. So I'm gonna roll onto the throttle now with that front wheel off the ground. We'll see how it performs. I feel the traction control biting. Nice. This is a really good system. When we did our big SUV comparison, this thing absolutely demolished the off-road course and it's just demonstrating here that it is arguably the king off-road. I know a lot of people think the Land Cruiser is, but I reckon this is right up there. Okay, time for some hill climbing. Now, our little hill here, uh, it's, it's okay in the dry, but in the wet it can just be a little bit challenging at times. So uh, to put it into low range, pop it over to neutral, slide it over to four low, that engages low range. We'll also lock the rear diff lock just to be on the safe side. So you can only do that when it's in low range. All right, here we go. So rear diff is locked. What I'll do, I'll just climb this uh, with gradual throttle and then uh, we'll come back and climb it, come to a stop and then take off just to see what traction is like here at the moment it is getting up here without any dramas at all those all terrains are just fantastic for this type of thing they give you all the traction you need when you don't have it so there we go that was a piece of cake and then we've got our little mud bath just here okay so time to test our hill descent control so i'm going to switch that on just there uh, i will also put the camera on so there's actually a setting here yeah there it is where it goes full screen despite the camera not being very good quality it actually works a charm for this just to set up the line that you need it's very bitey the um traction control but it looks like i can actually adjust the speed using the cruise control switch so yeah it's actually effective just noisy <laughs> Okay, take two for the hill. This time I'm gonna uh, basically climb it and come to a stop, and then we'll take off. We'll just see how well it performs doing that as the rain starts again. So I'll bring it up to around here, we'll come to a stop, roll onto the throttle. Here we go. Yeah, a little bit of slip there, but it is masterfully climbing. Very, very impressive. Time to drive over some rocks. So we do actually have a rock mode, so. I've left it in low range, engage rock mode. Oh, that's interesting. So the throttle has become very dull. 
So now with like gradual throttle inputs, it's not anywhere near as sort of uh, surgy, which is great because uh, on rocks you don't want to be thrown over them. So I'm just going to ride the brake with the throttle here. So with over 300 mil of ground clearance, this is the perfect setup for for this type of rock driving, especially with that underbody protection at the front. This is so comfortable over this, unreal. That is fantastic. Not a single touch down there. That is unreal. You've got to remember as well, this is all covered by the warranty too. So it's kind of just like a, you know, a win-win if you do want to modify it. It's already pre-modified and then it's covered by the warranty as well. So everyone wins. Okay, time to go through our river. We'll see what that's like. Okay, I'm going to lock the rear diff as well, just in case. <laughs> okay, dokie, here we go. So weighting depth of 700 mil. So... It should be a piece of cake, and it's 700 mil before you have the lift as well. So, all right, come through here. That parking sensor is annoying. All right, here we go. And we're going to climb out of here as well. And that's like a bit of steam coming off the engine. Beautiful. Very nicely done. Yeah, look, this this is an absolute beast. I cannot emphasise that enough. And like I said before, you know, it gives you a patrol, which is a great vehicle beneath the skin, then gives you usable off-road mods and a warranty to back it as well, and at a price that isn't outrageous at all. So, I don't know, <laughs> seems like a really good package if you do want to go off-road. So, Patrol Warrior, this is exactly what I was hoping it was going to be. It took the Patrol, which is great family SUV for off-roading and towing. Really just encompasses all of that fun stuff. Yes, it doesn't have some of that technology, but if you put that to the side, it has everything else that you want from a vehicle like this. And then they've just taken it to the next level with the four-wheel drive accessories that you need to go just that little bit further. Gives you accessories and modifications that are still covered by the warranty and it is still enormous fun to drive. It is let down by those tyres. I'm keen to test this in the dry to see if it's as bad as it is in the wet. Uh, ultimately, that is what you're going to have with all terrains, just like it is on the Raptor. But that is pretty much the only thing I can pick apart from this package. So let me know what you reckon. Is this thing a beast? Are you going to look at buying one? Or if you aren't, what are you going to look at buying instead? Let me know in the comments section below. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. Till next time, take it easy.